This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1212. Holiday Fitness, Healthy Christmas Food Choices by Rachel Trotta of racheltrotta.com. And I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy Saturday and happy six days before Christmas if you celebrate. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily where I act as your narrator of the best health and fitness blogs all for free. And we have a few shows where we do this, covering a bunch of different topics. Just search for Optimal Living Daily in any podcast app to find them. And with that, let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. Holiday Fitness, Healthy Christmas Food Choices by Rachel Trotta of racheltrotta.com. Okay, so you've been doing the seven-day holiday fitness challenge, right? If not, you can start now with a cardio day or upper body day and move on from there. These workouts are all limited to 15 minutes of high-intensity activities, and you can squeeze these moves into any tight space, guaranteed. You'll feel better all day if you sneak in 15 minutes of exercise in the morning. But we all know that exercise and nutrition go hand in hand when it comes to ultimate health and wellness. How do you manage nutrition during the time of year when all bets are off when it comes to healthy eating? The kitchen is full of frosting, treats are baking in the oven, and candied nuts are everywhere. My philosophy about holiday feasting is this. Do make merry, focus on fun, and eat with love and meaning. Making healthy food choices does not mean withdrawing from society during the holidays. Join in the festivities with an open heart. Focus on the people, even remotely, the memories, and the gratitude. Don't feel pressured, on the other hand, to eat something because it's a tradition or because a loved one made it. Food can be prepared with love, but food is not the same as love. If you truly feel uncomfortable eating something for health reasons, there are polite ways to decline. If someone is categorically upset about your choice, please know that that is not loving behavior on their part. Do focus on feel-good foods to avoid blood sugar spikes. If you're honest with yourself, how good do you really feel after eating certain foods? This is not about weight gain or being strict or eating clean. This is about maintaining a happy mood and avoiding unpleasant bloating and other side effects of no-holds-barred holiday eating. Want the energy to play with your children or chat for hours with a long-lost cousin? Eat meals that are rich in protein, healthy fats, vegetables, and whole grains, and skip fried foods and sugary snacking. Don't start a militant new diet the week of Christmas. When it actually comes to weight, many nutritionists advise seeking to maintain weight, not lose weight over the holidays. If you spent the entire year eating meat, don't choose the most stressful, most food-oriented time of year to suddenly go vegan, unless a doctor has recommended it. Focus instead on balanced choices in moderate portions. The best thing you could do if you're concerned about holiday weight gain is to avoid grazing on buffet spreads in between meals. As I like to say, make a plate and step away. Do participate in shopping for, cooking, and preparing food for holiday gatherings. Cooking is empowering because you have the power of choice when you start your meal at the grocery store. Reinvigorate traditional holiday meals by stocking up on ingredients for simple, high-fiber power sides like sautéed fresh string beans, skip the canned variety, or quinoa walnut cranberry salad and roasted garlicky cauliflower. Pairing simple turkey with these powerhouse vegetables makes for a healthy and indulgent feeling meal without sacrificing health considerations. Don't impose unusual food choices on others, using a holiday meal as an opportunity to educate others about weight or nutrition. If you are typically attentive to your health and wellness, including a healthy weight, you may have a rarefied view of food choices. If you are hosting, invite others to participate by bringing sides, drinks, or desserts. If you are attending, bring enough of your menu items to share, but remember that not everyone may choose your shredded root vegetable pancakes over the green bean casserole. You can make choices for yourself, but not for other people. Do remember that rich food is different from junk food. This is an important personal principle of eating for me. Generally, celebratory food is richer and higher in calories than what we normally eat. However, there is rich food, using ingredients like heavy cream, for example, and then there is junk food, which are foods that have no nutritional value whatsoever. 
If you are typically a very healthy, lean eater, periodically eating rich food can have the counterintuitive benefit of revving up your metabolism. Junk food, on the other hand, creates blood sugar mood swings, irritates inflammation, and ultimately can sabotage your goal of attaining or maintaining a healthy weight. Finally, don't let food choices send you into a panic over the holidays. If you've recently changed your diet and have removed certain ingredients, remember that you have the power of choice in every situation. Focus on self-care, meaningful experiences, and human connection, not the food. Get enough sleep. Continue to cultivate meaningful hobbies. Write holiday cards. Go for daily walks and get enough exercise. Spend time in the sunshine. Participate in the cooking. Seek out support. The bottom line is Christmas includes food, but it's not about food. The holidays are a time to focus on enjoying connection, creating special memories, and fostering a spirit of gratitude and giving. Focus on meaning, short-circuit stress, and your food choices will follow suit. You just listened to the post titled Holiday Fitness, Healthy Christmas Food Choices by Rachel Trotta of racheltrotta.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I said this many times, the holidays are my favorite time of year. And in the years before the pandemic, friends and family would often worry that if I was coming to the party, every dish served needed to be plant-based and low in calories and nutrient dense. And they would worry that I'm judging everything they eat. And so when I used to show up with a dessert in hand, they were often surprised and then they finally started to relax. I was once interviewed by a local radio station and they asked for my tips about eating healthfully over the holidays. Much of what I shared was similar to what Rachel mentioned in her post. I said that before going back for seconds, take a moment to enjoy the sights, sounds, and smells, not just of the food, but of the company, of the folks you're with. Rachel said it so perfectly when she said, make a plate and step away. I mentioned that filling up on vegetables and protein will help you feel full without the guilt. Oh, and mashed potatoes? doesn't count as a vegetable, it's a carb. Speaking of carbs, treat those like a dessert. Because so many common holiday foods are high in carbs, like the aforementioned mashed potatoes, and let's not forget about yams or sweet potatoes, stuffing or dressing, peas, rolls, biscuits, and so on, it's best to have a little bit of each. Watch those portion sizes. If you want a taste of everything, that's fine, but just have a little bit of each of those carb-rich foods. But again, load up on the protein and non-starchy veggies first so you'll feel a bit more satisfied before diving into the plethora of carb-rich foods. All right, that'll do it for today. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend if you're listening in real time, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for the Sunday show and where your optimal life awaits.